So we'll start by talking about loading bitmaps and SWIFTs, which is a very common uh, requirement in, in work in Flash. So in ActionScript 2, we had load movie, which was very easy, a very easy way of loading bitmaps and SWIFTs into Flash, uh, which had been part of Flash since Flash 4. And movie clip loader, which was a better, more powerful way of loading external media. It was a little more complex to use, but it gave you much more control over the process. Now in ActionScript 3, both load movie and movie clip loader are gone. And so instead, what we use is a loader class. And because we're referencing an external file, we have to wrap our loader, uh, the, re the load request in our loader, in a URL request. So you'll see here that we're going to create a new loader called BG Loader. And then we're going to load a new URL request pointing to, in this case, a JPEG into that loader. And because we want users to be able to see this, we're going to add the loader to the stage by writing add child BG Loader. We'll see the code, the same code, that uh, we just reviewed on the slide. So as I test this movie, now we'll see that the JPEG has loaded and has been added to the stage so it's visible. Now to illustrate that the same exact code can load a SWIFT, I'm going to comment out line 9 and then uncomment line 10 and test the movie once more. And now we'll see that the SWIFT, called SWIFT to load, is, uh, has been loaded and added to the display list. Now, if we want to respond to the successful completion of the load request, we'll listen for the complete event. So, for example, if we only want the SWIFT to become visible once it's fully loaded, we would put add child uh, in the complete event callback, as we do in this example. Now, the thing to keep in mind when you're putting listeners uh, along with loaders is that you're going to listen to the content loader info property of the loader as we do here on the second line of code loader dot content loader info dot add event listener this is one way in which the loader is different than the other uh, classes that we'll be using to load external media um, but now once we talk to the loader the content loader info property we listen for the complete event, which is event.complete. And when we hear that, we're going to run the function on Swift loaded. On Swift loaded is going to add the loader to the stage. So in this example, we're only going to add the loaded content to the stage once it's fully loaded. And so if we look in display when loaded, again, we'll see the exact same code we just walked through on the slide. So I will test the movie, and we'll see that we uh, have not only loaded the SWIFT, um, but we've added him to the stage, which meant that the function on SWIFT loaded was called, and the way in which it was called was when the complete event was heard on loader.contentloaderinfo. Now, we can use the progress event we can use the progress event to know when progress is heard on the load process. That is, when we receive more data. This would be really useful when we want to build a progress bar. So in this example, I have a movie clip on my stage called Loading Anim, and I'm going to hide that up front. And then I'm going to create my new loader, as we have in the past couple of uh, source files. And then in addition to listening for the complete event, we're going to listen for the progress event. And when the progress event is heard, we're going to call on progress. So let's see what that function looks like. So I'm going to scroll down to the uh, towards the bottom of our loading animation.fla. 
And in on progress, I'm going to make sure that the loading anim clip is fully visible. And then I'm going to calculate a number called n percent, where I'm going to divide evt.bytes loaded, that is how many bytes have been loaded on this load request, by evt.bytes total, what are the total bytes we will be loading from this load request. And I multiply that by 100 to get a nice um, number for the humans to read. Then I'm going to set the scale x, meaning the horizontal scale, of the bar movie clip inside my loading animation equal to that percentage over 100. And then I'm going to set the text value of the perk loaded text field equal to that percentage plus the percent sign. So if I double click this loading and a movie clip, we'll see that this is my bar movie clip, the black rectangle. And this text field is my perk loaded text field. So as I test this, we'll see that I've loaded my Swift successfully. That's no surprise. Um, but because I tested it locally, everything happened so quickly, I couldn't see that my loading animation worked. So what I'm going to do is uh, select View, Download Settings, 56K. And then I'm going to test my movie once more by selecting View, Simulate, Download. And we'll see that my loading animation is working just as intended. Now I'm going to wait till it hits 100% to make sure that it hides and I actually see the Swift that's loaded. And there we go. And so that's how you can use these uh, events to build a progress bar. Now you'll recall when we talked about runtime errors, I made specific reference to the example of requesting a file that didn't exist and how that can yield a runtime error. Now I also mentioned that the way to deal with runtime errors is to handle them so that if you handle a runtime error, you won't actually see it bubble up into the debug player panel or the output window. So in the case of a file not being found, we would want to handle the IO error event. And in the case of us not having the proper permission to access the file, for instance, it's on another server that we don't have access to, we would want to handle the security error event. So we can look at the code in handle errors, handle errors.fla. And I look at my actions panel. And I'll see that I've added two new event listeners. Here on line 11, I'm going to listen for the IO error event and call the on IO error function. And when I hear the security error event here on line 13, I'm going to call on security error function. And I added these functions down towards the bottom of the actions panel starting on line 22. And they will trace out the event. So to ensure that I'm going to hear the IO error event, I am going to actually point this to a file that doesn't exist, which will be nothing. So I'm going to try to em load an empty URL request into the loader. And so now, instead of yielding a runtime error, I've handled the error, and I've put my own trace statement in, which is why it appears in the output panel. And now if I publish this by selecting File, Publish, and then run the HTML in a browser, you'll see that I have not seen the debug panel uh, pop up. So again, I've handled the error, so the debug player doesn't pop up that nasty looking dialog.